Hello, I'm going to be talking today about some work on bootstrap inference for multiple imputation under uncongeniality and misspecification. This is joint work with Rachel Hughes at the University of Bristol. So uh, an acknowledgement at the start, this research made use of the Bellina High Performance Computing Service at the University of Bath to perform the simulations. So the work I'm going to describe today has just been published in the journal Statistical Methods in Medical Research. Um, you can see the information about the paper here. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of motivation then. So multiple imputation is very popular, and many of the reasons that it's popular for handling missing data is the simplicity of Rubin's combination rules. Now, one of the characteristics of these rules are that if the imputation and the analysis models are so-called congenial, and the models are correctly specified, Rubin's rules will give valid frequentist inferences asymptotically. So in particular, Rubin's variance estimator will be asymptotically unbiased, and in large samples, the confidence intervals will attain their nominal coverage level. Uncongeniality can arise in different ways, and here are some examples. The analysis model could be fitted to just a subgroup of those who were used in the imputation process. One of the models, i.e. the imputation or analysis model, could include an interaction, but the other does not. And a third example, which is... Um, I'm going to talk about in the simulations is so-called reference-based imputation for missing data or missing data due to dropout in clinical trials. So uncongeniality and model misspecification often lead to the MI point estimator being biased, but there are situations where the MI point estimator can be unbiased despite uncongeniality or model misspecification. And under uncongeni uncongeniality or mis misspecification, Rubin's variance estimator can be biased upwards or downwards, even when the point estimator for the parameter of interest is unbiased. In the last few years, there have been a number of papers looking at different approaches for combining bootstrapping with multiple imputation, with a variety of different um, reasons for investigating bootstrapping. So, Schoemaker and Hoyman 2018, Brand et al. 2019, and Von Hippel and Bartlett 2019. So what we set out to do in this work is specifically look at the performance of the different combination methods which had been proposed or recommended rather um, based on um, analysis and simulations in these other papers in the particular setting where the imputation analysis models might not be congenial each, with each other and where one or other of them could be misspecified. So in particular it only really makes sense to look at their validity in these situations if in, in the situations where the point estimated from MI is unbiased and so all that I'm going to say now is, is under the assumption that the MI point estimator is unbiased. So let's just briefly review Rubin's rules and this notion of congeniality. So in imputation, the imputer creates capital M imputations of the missing data using some model. And then the analyst, who could be the same person as the imputer, applies some complete data procedure, or put another way, fits some analysis model to obtain estimates of some parameter of interest theta, and I'm going to denote theta hat little m for the estimate of theta from the little mth data set and corresponding variance estimates, which are usually obtained um, based on analytical variance estimators. So the MI point estimator from theta is sim simply the arithmetic average across the capital M imputations of these theta hat small m estimates. And Rubin's variance estimator is the sum of the within imputation variance, which is the average of these within imputation complete data variance estimates, and the between imputation variance, which is simply the sample variance of the theta hats across the imputations over around their average. It's the sum of those two things, but a small adjustment here, the 1 over m, is to account for the um, finite number of imputations. So what's conge congeniality then? Well, Meng, in a paper in 1994, defined the notion of congeniality between an imputation model and the analyst's so-called incomplete and complete data procedures. So for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to say that the imputation model and the analyst's complete data procedure, so fitting their analysis model of interest, are congenial if there exists a Bayesian model for the data, which given the complete data, or the full data, the posterior mean and variance for the parameter theta are identical to the point estimate and the variance estimate from the analyst's complete data procedure. That's the first requirement. And then the second requirement is that the predictive distribution or the posterior distribution of the missing data given the observed under this Bayesian model is identical to that which is used to impute in the imputation model. So under, un under congeniality, you can show that the posterior mean of theta given the observed data in this Bayesian model equals the MI estimator when you let the number of imputations capital M go to infinity and the posterior variance of theta matches the um, 
Rubin's variance estimator as the number of imputations capital M goes to infinity. And so the MI point estimator and the Rubin's variance estimator with an infinite number of imputations gives Bayesian posterior mean and variance under this model, assuming congeniality. And so for infinite M, Rubin's rules is equivalent to Bayesian inference. If that Bayesian model is then correctly specified from the asymptotic results for Bayesian inference, it, it follows that the um, point estimator and the variance estimator from Rubin's rules are asymptotically going to be consistent under congeniality and correct specification of this Bayesian model. Rubin's rules, as I said, just then makes an, an adjustment for the fact that the number of imputations is in fact finite. Okay, so let's talk about some of the different ways which have been advocated or recommended for combining bootstrapping with imputation. First, I'm going to talk about some methods which first impute the missing data and then apply bootstrapping. So the first of these methods, which, which we're calling MI boot Rubin, does multiple imputation, so we impute capital M times. On each of the imputed data sets, we then generate capital B bootstrap samples, so sampling the data with replacement. And on each of that bootstrap samples, we apply the complete data procedure and obtain an estimate theta hat M comma B, so the little mth imputation and the bth bootstrap of that imputation. And then for imputation M, we estimate the variance of theta hat M by the bootstrap estimate of variance from these capital B bootstrap samples. So this is simply the, the sample variance of the theta hat M comma Bs around the average of the estimates of the capital B bootstraps of the little length imputed data set. So this is simply Rubin's rules, but rather than using an analytic formula for the complete data standard error or variance, we're using bootstrapping and using the bootstrap estimate of variance. Because this is essentially inference using Rubin's rules, we wouldn't expect it to be generally valid under uncongeniality or misspecification. Another variation which was recommended is the percentile interval, a bootstrap percentile interval based on these values of theta hat MB across the capital M imputations and the capital B bootstraps. So this simply ignores the clustered, the, the nested structure of the fact that the estimates from the bootstraps are nested within um, a given imputation, just considers them all as one big large vector and looks at the two and a half and 97.5th percentiles to form a percentile interval. So why might this give um, valid inferences? So under congeniality, the capital M imputations are M independent draws from the posterior distribution of the missing data given the observed under the Bayesian model, which exists under congeniality. Assuming the analysis model is fitting the maximum likelihood, uh, or calculating the maximum likelihood estimate for this uh, Bayesian model, B bootstraps of each imputed data set is equivalent asymptotically to B draws from the posterior distribution of theta conditional on each imputed complete data set. And so under congeniality, the capital M by capital B values of theta are draws from the posterior of theta given the observed data. And so under congeniality, this MI boot pooled percentile interval is equivalent to a posterior credible interval for, Bayes for the Bayesian model. Now the number of bootstraps is typically chosen to be large in bootstrapping. So I'm going to assume that, that that is the case. If you then choose M small, which you might be tempted to, to make the computational cost uh, feasible, you can actually show that the variance of these theta hat MBs across the pooled sample is too small. And to sort of see why that might be the case, if you decided to just choose M capital M to be one, so you impute the missing data once and then just bootstrap that once imputed data set, the posterior variance that you're that you're estimating there is the posterior for the complete data because you've imputed the data once and then used bootstrapping to find the posterior variance conditional on that imputed data. So under uncongeniality or misspecification, there's no reason to see that this confidence interval approach will have correct coverage. But under congeniality and correct specification, as long as B and M are both large, we would expect things to be okay. And indeed, that is what we found in simulations. So let's talk about some bootstrap then impute approaches. So this reverses the order. So the first approach is essentially just applying bootstrapping to the regular bootstrap method where the point estimator that we're trying to find inferences for is the MI estimator with capital M imputations. So we do capital B bootstrap samples. On each bootstrap sample, we impute the missing data capital M times. Now obtain estimates theta hat bm, so the order of the subscripting here is reversed because the order of imputation and bootstrapping has been reversed. Now we average the point estimates across the capital M imputations of that little beef bootstrap and then form 
percentile intervals as one option, bootstra standard bootstrap percentile intervals based on these theta bar b's. So this is just application of the bootstrap method to the MI estimator. So we might expect correct coverage even under uncongeniality or misspecification. Again, remembering that I'm assuming that the point estimator from MI is unbiased. So in particular, one version of this is the one recommended by Brand Hotel in 2019. So they ended up recommending the boot MI percentile confidence intervals, but with just one imputation. So one of the issues with that is that if you just use one imputation, as is well known from the MI literature, the point estimator is not very efficient. We can, there's a lot of Monte Carlo error, and the amount of Monte Carlo error depends obviously on the amount of missing information. But we know that the estimator and also the intervals will be wider than they need to be and wider than they would be if we used a larger value of M. So it's going to give you valid inferences we would expect, but possibly inefficient. In fact, as there's more details in the paper about, we've discovered an additional curious issue that occurs with this approach, the boot MI approach, when you use percentile intervals, which doesn't occur when you use wall type intervals. So the boot MI approach is the only approach that we expect to give confidence intervals with correct coverage under either uncongeniality or misspecification. We need relatively large values of B, the number of bootstraps, to obtain reliable estimates of variance. But if we choose M small, the point estimator is inefficient and intervals are wider than necessary, as I mentioned. So if we choose M large as well to get over that inefficiency, we end up with a very large number for B, capital B times capital M, and boot MI is going to take a long time to run. So that brings me to the last method that I'm going to mention, which was proposed by von Hippel. So von Hippel basically proposed a variation of the boot MI approach. So we first bootstrap, then we impute. He proposed as the point estimator the average of the estimates across, basically all the estimates across the imputations and the bootstraps. And to obtain a variance estimator, he decomposed the estimate of theta from the beth bootstrap and the mth imputation as theta bar infinity, so this is the point estimate we would get from mi with an infinite number of imputations, plus a mean zero deviation, which has the same variance it turns out as theta bar infinity, which I'm going to denote sigma squared infinity, and then a between imputation within bootstrap variance, which I'm going to say has variance sigma squared btw standing for between. So then you can rewrite this point estimator theta bar bm as theta bar infinity plus the average across b of these mean zero cb terms plus the sum of all these d subscript bm terms divided by capital B times capital M. That's how many of them there are. And so because these, are, these terms are independent of each other, the variance of the estimator theta bar bm is 1 plus 1 over b times the variance of the cbs, which is sigma squared infinity, plus 1 over bm times sigma squared between. There's derivation for this, which is somewhat more uh, careful, as you would as you would hope, in, in the paper. So if you've got these um, estimates theta hat bms, you can fit a one-way random intercepts model, because that's what we're saying here, that these estimates just follow a one-way random intercepts model asymptotically, to estimate these two variance components, and then insert those estimates into the preceding expression to estimate the variance of theta bar um, bm. Now you need large values of b to get reliable estimates of the uh, variance component sigma squared infinity, but if you have a large value of b, you can still use a large, a small value of m and get um, good estimates of sigma squared b t between there. So von Hippel recommended using a large value of b and just a small value of m of two. So the the, the great advantage now is that with only two imputations, we can get uh, a computationally less costly approach but um, we still get efficient inferences, statistically efficient inferences. So again, these derivations don't rely on assumptions of congeni congeniality or correct specification. So we should expect consistent variance estimates even under uncongeniality or misspecification for that approach. So I'm just going to finish with some simulations. There are more. I'm going to talk about some simulations using so-called reference-based imputation for clinical trials. There's quite a lot more simulation results under different situations, such as subgroups and emitted interactions in the paper. So the sample size for these simulations was um, trials of size 500. Patients were randomly assigned into two treatment groups, and then a baseline variable y1 and a follow-up measurement of y2 were simulated from a bivariate normal, with the mean of y2 dependent on treatment. We then made the follow-up measurement uh, missing completely at random, 50% missing completely at random. The analysis model was a regression of the follow-up 
um, outcome on treatment and the baseline, and interest focused on the treatment coefficient in that model. And the results here are t based on 10,000 simulations. So first we did missing at random imputation under a normal linear regression model. So that's congenial and um, correctly specified under a certain assumption. The results for that are in the paper. But next we imputed using the so-called jump to reference approach proposed by Carpenter et al. in 2013. So this imputes the active arm patients, the experimental arm patients, basically as, as if they'd switched onto the, to the control arm after dropping out from the study in a particular way that I'm not going to go into the details of here. And it turns out that this imputation model is uncongenial with the analysis model. So we've got an example of uncongeniality here. And here are the results. So I've got a number of different methods. The first one is just regular Rubin's rules with 10 imputations. This runs in very, very quickly. Confidence interval width, the median confidence interval width across the simulations and the coverage. So it's well known that this jump to reference uh, approach gives intervals which over cover the coverage is larger than 95%. So there's no surprises there. We've then got the MI boot approaches, MI boot Rubin and MI boot pooled. They post took considerably longer, as we would expect. These results here are with a thousand um, bootstraps um, on each imputation. And we see similar, very similar um, confidence interval widths and similar over coverage. Then we come to the boot MI approaches. First, we've got a boot MI percentile approach based on 10 imputations of each of the bootstraps. This takes the longest to run, but you can see here the intervals are much, much narrower and the coverage is close-ish to 95%, slightly elevated, and there's an explanation for the slight elevation. The explanation is this um, curious issue that I referred to earlier. So the boot MI with one imputation of each bootstrap, which was recommended by Brand et al., you get a, uh, it runs quickly or relatively quickly because there's one only one imputation on each bootstrap, but we get over coverage. And, and, there's, an, and there's, an, there's an explanation for that in the paper. The von Hippel approach uses two imputations per bootstrap, only runs slightly more slowly, but it gets the narrowest intervals and has coverage close to 95%. And the, in the other simulation results, you, you, you'll see if you look that the von Hippel approach performs nicely across all the different scenarios that we considered. Okay, so uncongeniality and misspecification often impl imply that the MI point estimator is biased, but there are situations um, where the point estimator is unbiased under uncongeniality and or misspecification. And in those cases, you may be interested in obtaining sharp, valid inferences. So what we found is that if you do imputation followed by bootstrapping, it's not generally going to give you valid inferences under either uncongeniality or misspecification. In contrast, certain types of bootstrapping followed by multiple imputation can give valid inferences in these situations. The von Hippel approach to uh, combining these is attractive in terms of its computational speed, and so it's the one that we recommended in our paper. The, the method is quite easy to program yourself, but it's also implemented in this R package boot impute, which includes some functionality for um, speeding things up by making use of parallel cores if you have that on your computer. And here are some references. Thank you very much.